What if vehicles using big caliber high explosive ammunition wouldn't have long reload? For example, 40 kg projectile could be shot twice per second. German premium tank destroyer is exactly this kind of vehicle. It can bury opponents under a barrage of suspiciously familiar looking rockets. The biggest drawback of tanks shooting massive high explosive projectiles significantly longer reload than everyone else. And if their hit fails to destroy an opponent, that same opponent will have opportunity to slowly write insulting message and shoot back a couple of times. But this tank destroyer does not give such opportunities. Instead, its rockets give very random damage and their shape humiliation. Each suspiciously shaped rocket can penetrate up to 42 mm of armor. That is not much since at battle rating 3.7 tanks start to have some armor. Opponents are usually damaged when explosion penetrates through weakest armor like turret ring or roof. Considering the random nature of high explosive ammunition, which will be demonstrated at the end of a video, damage is not guaranteed, so you will usually need to use few rockets on the same target, especially when facing heavily armored opponents. Sometimes even hitting them with all 10 of your rockets won't deal enough damage to destroy them. There might be a feeling that it's not the rockets you shoot, but something else. On the other hand, penetration doesn't matter too much when you hit soft targets that can be hull broken, sometimes even without direct hit. Talking about direct hits, they won't happen too often. You will miss a lot of rockets. First of all, because rockets have slow muzzle velocity. They fly at speed of 340 meters per second. Just like any other vehicle using high caliber high explosive shells, Hitting distant targets is difficult. Additionally, default sight for rockets has no markers indicating range, which makes range finding useless, so aiming becomes even harder compared to any other tank with slow projectiles. For this reason, I would highly recommend using custom sight, link is in the description. Even if it's not very accurate, at least it will give you basic idea where your shells are going to fall. On the other hand, missing a target with this vehicle is not so big issue. Due to ability to shoot 10 rockets in a row before reloading, you can adjust your aim depending on where the first rocket dropped and immediately shoot another one, repeating that until you get the distance right. It's simple and relatively quick way to measure the distance, just you must have at least some rockets left to actually destroy opponents. So any map with wide open spaces and little cover will put this tank destroyer at disadvantage and you will need to find a way to get as close as possible to be effective. But even if you got the distance right or opponent is right next to you, it doesn't mean that your accuracy problems are solved. When you point your crosshairs on opponent, you are looking through the top of the rocket launcher and not the projectile. That means instead of flying from the crosshair, rockets on your right will fly slightly to the right and since launcher has two rows of projectiles, half of them will aim slightly higher and another half lower. It's much harder to hit your target when every rocket flies slightly differently than previous. And aiming at specific weak spots on purpose is hardly possible. So, add high explosive projectiles random damage and inability to properly aim and you get absolutely unpredictable outcome of your shots. The ability to quickly launch multiple rockets in this case is not an advantage, but necessity. Since 10 rockets per launcher is not so big amount considering how many times some opponents must be hit in order to destroy them, you will need to take the maximum amount of ammunition into battles. 
if you do that, once the launcher is empty, after quite long reload of 18 seconds, another 10 rockets will be ready. And if full launcher sometimes is not enough to destroy one tank, you can already imagine how often you will run out of ammunition when 20 rockets is all you get for the whole battle. But you don't need to worry about the whole battle when vehicle has no survivability. It has only 8mm of armor, it's hull breakable, has only 3 crew members and these huge ammo are filling all the empty space. The launcher can be rotated 360 degrees, which is comfortable, with a rotation speed of 15 degrees per second, which is not so comfortable but acceptable. Since majority of similar vehicles, like ones in annotations, have no turrets at all, full rotation is definitely an advantage. Launcher's depression angle is 7 degrees, with a small exception. Hans, behind the wheel, doesn't want the gunner to point these suspicious rockets at him, so whenever launcher looks at the driver's cabin, gun's depression is zero. On a good note, machine gun seems to be an illusion. Rockets, or whatever that is, can go right through it. If you need gun's depression or want to expose only one crew member to increase survivability, turn launcher around and drive backwards to peek around the corner. Just be prepared to move slowly at 8 kph. When you need to cover bigger distances, you better move as intended forward. But even then you won't be very fast. Despite maximum speed is 45 kph, you will usually reach about half of that speed. Vehicle also faces difficulties when it makes turns in narrow streets, as it's quite long, just like its ammunition. Additionally, it uses wheels for steering, which means it must move either forward or backward to turn sideways. And one of the least useful things was machine gun. It is low caliber and can penetrate only trucks, which are reliably hull broken by your rockets anyway. But the worst part, it's hard to use it against planes since it's limited to shoot only in front of vehicle's hull. Even rocket launcher felt better suited to fight air targets. In arcade, at first glance it might look terrible. First of all, every vehicle gets penetration indicator, but this is not one of those vehicles. Just like in realistic, you don't know how high you should aim in order to compensate for gravity and if your rocket is going to do damage at all. Additionally, because of crew replenishment, you will have to kill all crew members in order to destroy vehicle. So considering random damage and difficulties in aiming, additionally it becomes more difficult to finish opponents. Also, because of markers, light tanks in arcade are a disadvantage as they cannot ambush opponents. This tank destroyer with 8mm of armor suffers pretty much like a light tank, just it cannot scout opponents. Probably that sounds like a description of overpowered vehicle because its battle rating in arcade is increased to 4.0. On a good note, your rockets will be reloaded anywhere without need to visit capture point and you will be able to move faster thanks to engine boost and a high maximum speed. But most importantly, in case you have downloaded custom sights, you can approximately aim at opponent's position using the distance on their name tag. That's a significant help. If you have custom sight, despite all the downsides, vehicle can become even better than in realistic. Overall, this premium tank destroyer, which is quite slow, fragile and very difficult to aim, was interesting to play. Despite having many disadvantages, ability to spam high caliber explosive rockets is extremely unusual and of course useful, so you can make a difference in battle at least until you run out of ammunition. I would rate this vehicle 5. Ammo out of 10. It is very specific vehicle, 
Not very good choice if you are looking for a premium tank to farm research points, but a good choice if you are interested in unusual gameplay. In the last clip, before you start putting likes and subscribing, I would like to demonstrate how random those rockets are. Let's calculate how many shots will it take to destroy a light tank which armor plates are thinner than rockets penetration.